to Red Bull Land Orlando Day number three. I'm Day Nine. And I'm DJ Wheat. And Sean, I'm excited to be here at Full Sail University for the conclusion mm -hmm. of the Red Bull Land. We've got a championship bracket that we're going to be playing through today. And I assume you're going to tell us a little bit about that. Oh, indeed he do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule for the day. In case any of you are wondering how to get down here, come on down to Full Sail University where we're at Full Sail Live. We're going to be starting off the day by just checking out those round of eight games, we're going to hop right into some of the action as the focus players are already getting ready for those games. Following that, of course, semifinals in the evening, finals coming up. For the record, those times all depend on how quickly these games end up wrapping up. Please. Yeah, of course, and you know, we've seen uh, our fair share of long games and short games. It's just going to depend on the matchup and, uh, of course, the players themselves, but certainly all of them ready to try to duke it out. And the way it's going to work is that every single time one of these players actually wins a match, they're awarded a little bit of money. That's absolutely correct. In fact, for the round one games, if you win it, you get handed $100 in cash. If you win the next round, you get handed another $200. If you win the semifinals, you get handed another $300. And of course, that final $500 prize means that if you won every single game winning the championship, you get $1,000 cash to take home. You don't even have to wait for a check in the mail. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Getting ready for the competition that's coming up next week. All these guys very, very excited. And having spoken to the players, and hopefully you saw this too, Every single one of them walking away with a little bit better practice, having been mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. at the Red Bull land, especially those focus players who really got to hone in on oh, yeah. certain issues or in Hasuab's case, like uh, refining a build. Yeah, I mean, the four focus players, for any of you who didn't get the chance to watch day one and two, are the four players we followed in their training. Those four players are Chef, Rhett, Thorzane and Hasuabs. Each one had a different challenge that they were trying to focus and hone in on their practice. Chef on the left, focusing on Zerg versus Protoss long-term games with air. Thorzane focusing on aggression in the mid-game with his Terran versus Zerg. Hasuabs was trying to work on a PvP build, just right. stress testing it. And Rhett trying to figure out the right way to transition to Broodlords versus Protoss. And all of them doing very well. Uh, some of mm -hmm. them uh, having a more difficult road than others, but that was kind of the, the concept of the training. We knew that some mm -hmm, mm -hmm. were going to be able to, uh, you know, really defeat their challenge while others really worked at it. Chef in particular, even though when he had four losses in that last game, he really brought it all together for a nice win. The question now will be is, will he be able to take that mm -hmm. and, and take the challenge and the practice that he had and win a match here. I don't know. I'm excited, but I think we're going to start soon, yeah? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the brackets for Championship Sunday. Those focus players are starting one round ahead. We see Hasuab's up in the top, Chef, Thorzane, and Parting, or excuse me, and Rhett are the four focus players. Parting did receive a buy as there are currently 11 players at the LAN, and we will be starting with that top round two match. You might be asking what happened with JYP and Morrow. It was a close series that JYP closed out two to one. Oh, wow. Uh, I'll be curious to see those games as well. But yeah, Hasuabs then taking on JYP, Mouse Sports versus Evil Geniuses. It is best of three. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but the grand finals will be best of five. Is that, that is accurate? absolutely correct. DJ Wheat. Excellent. And because we've been looking at a bracket for a little bit of time, I think it's time to step in to some StarCraft too. Are Let's you ready, ladies it. and gents? Oh, I always love the enthusiasm of people. I don't want to say in the morning it is 6 p.m., but it is. if you have a gamer sleep schedule, it is early morning, 6 p.m. <laughs> here down in Full Sail University. Interesting to note, it's Protoss versus Protoss. It's what Hasuabs was focusing on at this land. Yeah, you're right. And will we see this build that actually he was working on? Has he had enough time to really refine that? He did have some success with it yesterday, but he also was uh, really, really fought, or really, really hard fought versus a lot of variety that came from his opponent, Naniwa, who went for an ultra aggressive style. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. of course, we had Sase, who who played a little bit more, more standard PvP style openings. But uh, either way, we're about to find out. Did that training pay off? Will we see oh, yeah. this? Uh, will we see this particular build refined? I'm excited to find out. In the bottom right corner, we have from Germany and Team Mouse Sports. It's Hasuabs. And up in the top left from Team Evil Geniuses, it is JYP. His name is just five letters in a row. <laughs> How cool is that? 
Now, I, do you think JYP was uh, kind of watching the focus challenge with uh, with Hasua? Do you think he well, might? Well, I was watching JYP spar quite a bit with Parting, who's mm. sitting directly to his left in those 3v3 booths. And also interesting to note about this is we get the chance to see, oh, look at this, Hasuab's actually going for an 11 gateway. I don't know if this is an adjustment to his uh, the build he was practicing yesterday, or whether he said, you know what, it's tournament Sunday, I better be bringing out all my old successful builds instead of this new shaky build. Yeah, I mean, because of, like we talked about yesterday, sometimes you're finding a build, it doesn't take five games, ten games, maybe even uh, 50, 100 before you're really, really solid and comfortable with that build. Also, I was uh, throwing down these similar, at the mm -hmm. same time as uh, JYP there, just uh, right about the same. And, um, you know, fo focusing uh, on the build that Hasu was working on, uh, it had a unique opening. Uh, uh -huh. One of the things that uh, we did note was, of course, the rallied gas. And so far, no, he's just going to go ahead and throw two in the gas. He has not got his Elliot yet, so I do not think we're going to yep. see the build that he's got as we immediately see that cybernetics core going down. It does look like JYP is a little bit behind in that cybernetics core timing, and that's all a result of that 11 gateway we saw Hasuab's plop down. And, you know, I think that's a great point you bring up, Marcus. The fact that it does generally take 50 to 100 games to develop that kind of comfort with a build. And that might sound like so much, but you know, a pro can easily play 30 games in a day. So right. he spends the first half of the week getting a build down really solid, and the second half of the week, he's already feeling really comfortable with it, already getting some wins under his belt. But still, does he have that much time to prepare for this tournament? prepare for his tournament next week it looks like he he, he decreed the answer was n indeed no and interesting he's chrono boosting out a stalker instead of a fast warp gate yeah unfortunately that stalker not going to get out before the pro comes in here so jyp is going to see exactly what hops out of the gateway first and uh and you know what else he can you know any additional information he can get also there's a pro from hasu down here right at the bottom of his ramp as the pro uh in hasu's base is eliminated hasu is going to go ahead and move that out of the way but we have a second gateway already going down here for JYP. It's about ready to finish yep. up and he's chrono boosting his warp gate so it is uh, a good deal ahead of Hasu. Now all of Protoss vs. Protoss does revolve around right when that warp gate finishes for the early game at least. So you always have to answer the question, how do I shove back a player trying to build a pylon nearby my base? Hasuab's answers this question by chrono boosting out two stalkers very quickly. In that unit tab we already see that Hasu has twice as many stalkers as his opponent. Lol, I mean, they literally <laughs> chrono boosting two out as fast as possible. Will, of course, put the opponent behind a little bit. JYP playing very defensively. And with the setup we see from Hasu, is he going to be going three gate, two gate expand? Will he go for a robo? Right now, all Hasu's really established is that he wants to play a little bit defensively as he's rushing to get these stalkers out so swiftly. Yep. Uh, I mean, JYP is going to be throwing down his cy cybernetic, or excuse me, his uh, robotics oh. bait. And yeah, we're going to have a little battle here at the beginning. And we have two versus one here. JYP's got to get that stalker out of there. Of course, uh, the numbers, you can obviously see that Hasu wins that one. However, there is a sentry at the top, so JYP can feel comfortable being able to defend any units trying to make their way in the base. Using that high ground vision, get some additional damage there on that stalker. But Hasu pushing his opponent back with the three stalkers, just like you talked about. Now let's talk about some interesting scouting that just happened there, Marcus. He voluntarily moves his stalker close to this edge because he wants to see what's shooting at him. Is it only stalkers? Is it a sentry in there? Is it two sentries? By seeing one sentry that early on, that gives him a lot of good information. Look at this. JYP is going to be going for four gates and a robo. I would not be surprised to see a Warp Prism pop out of this. He can do one quick round of warp ins, easily do some big aggressive harassment. At the same time, Hasu doing a similar variation of what we saw happen in his yesterday match versus Parting. Hasu studied that game quite a bit, and whoopsie daisies, Marcus. <laughs> He's oh. not going to be going more prison. It looks like a standard blink play for yeah, JYP. Blink uh, in the back already started. Going to get chrono boosted immediately. And Sean, look at this stalker positioning here on uh, the west and the east side of the map. Just sitting there because so it's beautiful. a great little place for a probe to try to sneak by. In fact, this stalker over here on the west side has already eliminated one probe trying to make his way over here. So some just mm -hmm. very thoughtful scouting in addition to what he did earlier there. The warp gates are opening up now, continuing chrono boost on blink. The first observer is out and of course with blink in that observer he might choose to just kind of pick and uh, fire away at various uh, things inside of Hasuab's base we'll have to see exactly what he's gonna 
uh, Duke here in this situation, but he is moving out. Oh, so I was getting an observer. I think this could be a tremendous blunder. You think you need the observer to check out what's going on, but what you really need to be looking for is, has my opponent expanded? Mm. If Hasu saw that there was no expansion, he would know. He doesn't need an observer. He instead needs an immortal. And right now we see Hasu again spending that chrono on the robotics facility. He really needs to get some more immortals up to hold off this big blink push coming up. <sighs> big indeed. Is, uh, here the observer comes out. Oh, and Hasu I'm almost losing it. Only the shields do get knocked off of that one. But remember, JYP now can also blink into the main and just cause this army to really spread itself out. The observer's going up, and that's exactly uh -oh, what he's going to do uh -oh. here. Targeting down that robotics facility that is building an immortal. He could really use that second immortal, and it is going oh, to go no. down. The immortal lost with it. And now JYP can turn up the aggression from here. An incredible blow to the defense for Hasu. He's going to try to rebuild a second robotics facility, but right now he needs to be chrono boosting his gateways, trying to find some way to burn that money. Very nice set of force fields by Hasu Ab right after that blink plopped down. So it does look like Hasu is continuing to defend himself quite nicely. In that unit tab, we see Hasu at 35 folks, and JYP's 27 stalkers. JYP has to make some magic happen if he wants to. And stalkers move up yet again. Are we going to have more force fields? No, just pushing them back as he can. The robotics facility is being uh, rebuilt here in the natural, and along with two additional gateways. You don't want to have that shot down yet again. Now the Zealot's going to move forward. Hopefully pad some of this oh. damage. The blink and the Immortals removed from the equation. And uh, JYP is just going to wreak havoc here at the front of Hasuab's natural. That blink's so brutal for dealing with the Immortal, but it's going to struggle quite a lot against those Zealots that were right there. Currently, it looks like Hasu is managing to hold on strong, but he needs to get these gateways in front of this up as swiftly as possible. Zealots will do virtually nothing versus Blink Stalkers. They may as well not even be part of the battle. And right now, these force fields, even though it seems like they won't help against Blink, you can always throw one down, close off the concave a little bit on those units, and it looks like Hasu yet again is struggling to keep his expansion alive. He's bringing the probes. He's got to be really careful. He doesn't want to lose too many. Otherwise, his expansion is virtually useless. And at the same time, it looks like the Immortal has completed, and Hasu gets a little bit of a breather. Yeah, in fact, that Immortal coming out is going to be quite good here for Hasu. A second one is on the way. A pylon goes down here at the front. There's another blink four oh, to pick no. off the Immortal. Oh, but a, oh, it looked like he was going to save it with the force field pushing one stalker forward, and the Immortal does go down. The probes come out yet again. He lost none in the last battle, and he's likely going to use a, lose a couple right here as the uh, uh, the unit count of Hasuabs is slowly declining, but it is still 55 food to 55 uh -oh. food. Another blink into the main, and a pylon goes down. This is a great job by JYP, trying to keep up as much pressure as he physically possibly can. And with that Immortal in the back, actually, you do want to be very careful with that Immortal control. If you end up in a bad position, that is lights out for that Immortal. There's the blink up onto the... Oh, it looks like the Immortal going to take some huge damage. JYP continuing to surround Hasuwabs needs to just morph in only basic gateway units right now. The Zealot's actually doing some considerable damage to these Blink Stalkers, but the instant JYP pops onto that low ground, it's going to be very difficult for all of those Zealot's to be able to do too much pressure. Hasu continuing to warp in. If Hasu holds off this push, he actually does manage to win this game. But right now, it looks like JYP has so many low health stalkers. We can just get those two in the back. Ooh, he does manage to barely, barely do the damage he needs to get those last two off. But there's the blink ahead. And if Hasu ends up losing this game, this could be quite a tragic, tragic loss as he's been so close all game long. Yeah, the probe's coming out now, dishing out a little bit of damage there to these Stalkers. The uh, Stalker count for Hasu is up to four, but the number's still looking in JYP's favor, blinking back to avoid kills from these Zealots. But as you mentioned, a lot of low-health Stalkers, and he has separated these quite a bit. Two more Stalkers do come in, but he still has the numbers advantage. Oh, it looks like JYP, after some amazing and intense control, is finally getting the advantage. No expand. There's the good game. Mm -hmm. A very... Very thin win there by JYP. And you know, even though Hassel ended up losing that game, it was by Razor's Edge. Yeah, I mean, the one big thing, I think, was uh, losing that uh, robotics facility oh, inside absolutely. the main. I mean, just yeah. such a great snipe by JYP. Go in, it's in a position. He took literally zero damage in return for it. Maybe a little bit of, of hole damage on the Stalkers, but not even one single unit loss. And uh, as a result, he was kind of just trying to uh, find his ground after that happened. Yeah, and you know, I would also like to again emphasize, there's, there's the man who won JYP playing next to Parting, and of course course, the coach to Startail. You know, th that was that moment where he chrono boosted out the additional observer instead of immortal number two. It's always one of those moments mm, where right. if you're against, I would say, 
a player who you'd give a 95 out of 100 in terms of his micro, you can get away with a single immortal. But now you will be guaranteed to be up against players who are 100 out of 100, never make those misclicks, never make those mistakes, and can successfully break the front every single time if you only have one immortal. You really have to just say, you know what? I'm not going to get that chance to scout with that observer. Right. I've got to get the second immortal out if I'm going